and will be put up. It'll be put up um, on our website tomorrow, um, so you'll be able to review it there. Um, but yeah, welcome to our info session. Very excited to uh, get started. Um, we'll just give like a brief overview um, of the delegation, um, kind of what it's looked like in previous years, what it'll look like this year, um, and then the timeline for the application, sort of about when you can expect to uh, hear back from us. All right, going right into it, um, COP is the um, UN Conference of Parties. Um, it's held every year. Um, it is, I think, the fourth um, in a sort of series of conferences that happen um, throughout the year um, where uh, uh, delegates from countries get together to sort of discuss global climate policy um, and negotiate agreements. Um, and COP, COP is essentially the culmination um, of the conferences that happen throughout the year. Um, it started as, yeah, it started um, with the Kyoto Protocol um, and then has sort of blossomed from there. Um, originally it was sort of a much smaller conference, um, but as sort of climate change has gained uh, more attention, um, it's become more of a um, event each year with many countries participating with the public aspect of COP uh, sort of getting larger and larger each year. Um, so there are actually two parts to the COP conference. Um, there's something called the blue zone and something called the green zone. Um, the blue zone is um, reserved for uh, invited uh, participants. So that will be like countries delegates, um, reporters, and then occasionally um, uh, like university students will be invited as observers. Uh, we submitted an application. Unfortunately, it looks like it won't go through this year. So it seems like this year, again, we'll solely be sticking to the green zone, um, but there's plenty that goes on um, throughout the conference. Um, so typically uh, the way the conference is structured is there'll be sort of themed uh, days um, and then there will be panels, talks, side events that um, coalesce around those themes. Uh, the theme for this year's COP is in solidarity for a green world. The specific days haven't been decided yet. That's pretty normal. They, a lot of things sort of don't get nailed down up until the conference uh, starts. Um, but as an example, last year's themes um, covered nature, agriculture, energy transition, finance, organization. Um, it's really, really broad. Um, but for the most part, panels that occur during that day will follow a lot of the themes. Not always because you know, there's sort of a lot going on, but for the most part, um, they'll sort of align themselves to the themes. Uh, so as I said, we'll specifically be in the green zone, which is the public uh, area of COP. Um, so there's a lot going on in the green zone, typically. Um, you'll occasionally have um, events um, with like delegates who are there to do negotiations in the blue zone, will come and speak in panels in the green zone, um, there'll be panels held by a lot of countries. There'll be panels held um, by NGOs, by corporations, by startups. Um, they really will cover a lot. Essentially, <laughs> anything you can think of, there'll probably be a panel on it. Um, they're super interesting, um, but there'll also be other areas besides just the panels going on in COPS. So um, very often um, there's side events, very um, often there's areas where there's booths set up um, where like there might be, I think like for example, last year Microsoft had a specific booth and throughout the event, um, aside from the official, official panels, like Microsoft was hosting like their own many panels going on throughout the day. And that's very, very common. Um, and you'll have that both from like, like I said, NGOs, you'll have that from corporations, you'll have that from governments, um, you'll have that from universities. Um, and so it's, there's sort of a lot going on. Um, and 
we really encourage that students who are part of the delegation sort of use that um, as an opportunity to shape their own experience while they're there. There's so much going on um, that aside from like a couple events we might do with you, uh, we really let you be in charge of your own experience. Um, your, our delegation is typically like very varied. We uh, intentionally choose people from all different kinds of backgrounds with all different kinds of interests. And we really encourage you to pursue those interests while at COP because they'll, there will not be a lack of activities for you to do. Um, in addition to sort of the um, official area of the green zone, there are typically side events that go on at the same time. Um, so for example, um, a couple that we um, went to in previous years, um, there was a World Climate Summit, uh, which was a bit more private sector focused um, and energy transition focused. Um, there was the Atlantic Council of Global Energy Forum. Um, I'm pretty sure there was another one that was uh, specifically finance focused. Um, and so there's a lot of side events going on as well. Um, and as we get closer to uh, the actual conference, um, those events start cropping up more. Um, and we try to keep a running list of what's going on to share with students. Um, but we encourage students to go to side events as well. There's, there's truly a lot happening. Um, and additionally, we also plan um, some side events. Uh, so last year, um, we had a dinner with some alumni as well as um, some epic folks that uh, were there doing uh, for research. Um, and we had a dinner with them. Um, we also had students like meet up uh, with students from, who were also there from other universities. Um, and again, we really encourage um, you sort of tailor your own experience, but we do have these sort of smaller things that we plan that like uh, we'd like you to go to, but there it'll be like one or two events. For the most part, um, there's plenty for you to do. Okay, uh, and okay. then I talk about logistics. All right, thanks, Atiba. Uh, good to see a lot of familiar faces in the room. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Will Luderman. I work at Career Advancement here in the college, helping coordinate STEM programs. So Sativa and I have worked very closely over the past several years on this top program, and it's very exciting. Um, while I think every year we like to do more and more with this, so we're learning more and more as well. This isn't a... Um, uh, you know, as a university, this a big part of what we do here is building institutional knowledge about the program and the event because this is, as um, a lot of people have referred to it as, uh, it's kind of the circus comes to town and we kind of get dropped in the middle of it. So that's what we're looking for in the application side of it is thinking about how you can be a part of that institutional knowledge, be a part of that institutional plan, how can you deal with unexpected um, changes, how can you remain resilient during this process. Um, we're looking for folks who can be ambassadors to the university and also looking for folks who have a clear-eyed understanding of what they want to get out of this. Um, so specifically, the application is going to ask, like a lot of applications you've filled out here probably at the university, um, for general personal academic information, um, looking for a personal statement. Um, this is short. We are not looking for lengthy academic papers. Instead, we're looking for three distinct things. How do you understand the UNFCCC in that process? Um, have you done some basic homework on this? How you can represent the university? And that's not just thinking about the generics in terms of you can be well-behaved or you can talk about UChicago. Think about particular, like how does your experience at the university um, present a unique aspect and what do you bring to the table um, in particular? We'd love to hear your story and what that, what that means to you. And then lastly, definitely want to hear about how you'll remain engaged in the university after COP29. As I mentioned, we're looking for folks who um, want to be leaders on climate on campus and looking for folks who can really contribute to that institutional memory for better or for worse when it comes to um, experiences with COP. Um, also looking for resumes, short answers, um, and other information. A lot of this is somewhat logistically geared that as we ramp up in this, as well as we understand that this is a commitment that takes place during the academic year and in fact will take place in one of the more difficult parts of the academic quarter. Um, luckily, it's not over finals like it was last year. Instead, I think it'll be 
probably week seven or week eight. So still towards the end of the quarter. So it is kind of prime time for all your fall quarter activity. Uh, do you want to move to the next slide, Sativa? Thanks. Um, so definitely want to dive more into evaluation because this is a common part of questions as I do want to highlight that it's a competitive process. We do have more applicants than um, spots that we have. And I would love to bring everybody. A lot of this is just logistical constraints at this time, but I will say encouragingly every year, we've been able to bring more students, expand the program. That's a strong commitment of both of our teams here is to be inclusive and open about it, the whole process. Um, so four main things here. Um, definitely want to understand, uh, see that you understand on the conference and what it what it is. Um, again, the COF negotiation process and the UNF Triple C is um, a sensitive topic. Uh, I'll be realistic, with everybody here. Not everybody thinks COF and the negotiations are great, and in fact, a lot of people are not happy about them, and that's fine. We just want to show that you understand the purpose of that and why you might be going and observing that kind of process. Also want to think about that motivation. Um, you show the goal, like commitment to a cop in New Chicago. Again, we're looking for folks who, again, you don't have to be satisfied with um, why these negotiations are taking place, but you understand the purpose of going and attending and the importance of the world stage and what that looks like. Um, also want to think about engagement. Um, we want to bring folks who are somewhat engaged in the community. We want to bring folks who um, again, represent different parts of the campus community. Um, so we uh, are definitely looking for folks who have been involved on campus in some way or another, and that, that can be really diverse um, from arts to athletics. You don't have to be in an environmental club or so. Um, just want to think about how we can connect with different parts of campus. And then resilience is a part of this, certainly. This, this can be a difficult trip in some ways, just logistically speaking. It's, <laughs> you know, 10 time zones away during a school year. And they, these can be long days and long trips. So want to hear about uh, your ability if we drop you in another country um, kind of overnight, you're able to respond to that. So happy to take more specific questions about this, but I think um, let's move on to the next slide, Satina. Right, I'm going to turn over to Mary at this point. And then I think um, questions, we'll definitely get questions about this in the last section. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Will. Um, hi, my name is Mary. Um, I'm sure I don't know very many of you. I am a director in careers in STEM at the Career Advancement Office as well. Um, so I'll be helping with organizing COP29 this year. Um, and so in these last couple of slides, we just kind of want to go over the timeline for what happens with your application and afterward um, leading up to the actual conference dates. So as of last Friday, the application has been live. Um, we were hoping that more people would come to the info session so they could, you know, put their best application forward. So now we're at the application or at the information session June 13th. The application officially closes on June 23rd, which is a Sunday at 11.55 p.m. So essentially midnight. You'll have all day Sunday to get your application in. Um, but then after June 23rd, that's pretty much all the hard deadlines that we have right now. Um, in early July, that's when we'll make our finalist um, interview decisions. And then by mid-July, that's when we will actually announce um, our student selection. Um, if we could go to the next slide. So um, in August, for the students that are selected to attend the COP29 delegation, we will be sending out an agreement form or an acceptance form. Um, and essentially what this acceptance form is, is just like, I agree to participate at COP. It's also gonna be important to fill out so that we can have your personal information, emergency contact information. And what's really, really important about this is we're also gonna get some of your passport and visa information. So if you have like dual citizenship, like what are those visa requirements and how they look different for you potentially. Um, and one thing that you might wanna start considering now is if your passport is up to date um, uh, with um, the travel requirements to Azerbaijan, you are not allowed to travel to Azerbaijan unless your passport is valid for three months after the day that you enter. So let's just say your passport has to be valid through February, 2025. Um, if it's not, um, we need to have some type of 
proof that you have at least applied for a passport renewal or passport um, by the time that you submit your acceptance form. Otherwise, your acceptance might be withheld. Um, so just start thinking about that now if you think your passport might be expiring soon. Um, and then in September, we're going to start um, training for the actual conference. And so with these trainings, we'll have them weekly meetings where we'll talk about what to expect from the conference, um, your roles, um, and um, what the actual proceedings will look like. And that will go all the way up until the actual conference start, which will, the conference proceedings are from November 11th to the 22nd. Um, we will not be going for the entirety of that. We're kind of hoping to go towards the later end of the conference when more things are actually happening, there's more events happening. So right now this is not solidified yet, but we're kind of thinking November 15th as a flyout date and then a return date of about November 20th, maybe 21st. Um, but I think that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, so we'll be sending out the slide deck as well as the application link if you guys don't already have it. The application link is also right here on the supply button. But um, while we still have some time left in the session, we'll open it up for um, any questions that you may have about the proceedings or timeline or application. And I think we actually do have one in the chat right now. Um, it says, how, if at all, does acceptance into this year's delegation impact acceptance into future delegations? Uh, Will, do you want to take this one? Yeah, happy to answer that. Wow. Uh, thanks for the question, Geneva. Um, if you have specific questions about circumstances, let's have a conversation about it and definitely encourage you to at least apply so we can have that conversation. Um, generally, again, this is a newer initiative program, so we actually haven't encountered situations like this yet. Um, so what I'll be upfront with everybody in this group, as well as for folks on the recording, that um, it's likely that we're only, in order to have access, that we'll um, have students only eligible to go once during their time at the college. Again, I'm not going to set that forth as a forever policy as of right now. I think that's just in the spirit of openness and participation and getting as many folks engaged as possible. I think this has come up in circumstances where if you're not sure if this year will be make the most sense for you, if you're thinking about doing an abroad program or uh, you're having a particularly hard quarter or it doesn't work out for whatever reason, let's definitely have a conversation about future years as well. Uh, so thank you for that question. Um, Yasmin, how many students are accepting to the delegation capacity? Sativa, you wanna take that one? Yeah, it'll be uh, 15 undergraduates, um, and then there will also be graduate students there, um, 10 graduate students. We're taking 25 students in total. Um, this is an increase from last year. Uh, last year, we took 12 undergraduates, um, and we were pretty interested in expanding the program, uh, so this year it'll be 15. Um, and we plan to have, as even as we can, spread of um, students from uh, uh, second, third, and uh and fourth years. Um, yeah. So the expenses question is a really good question. Uh, we cover flights, uh, hotels. Um, the hotel will have uh, breakfast uh, typically. Um, and remind me, well, I can't remember if we um, cover dinner, but while you're out and about at the conference, you will be um, expected to pay for your own lunches um but the flights and hotels are covered by the program yeah thank, thanks for filling out over here uh sativa i i think plan on covering your own lunches and dinners but with that being said it's likely that we're going to cover a dinner multiple depending on scheduling like especially if we have group dinners alumni stuff like that we definitely want to understand that we're doing an event in the evening that we'll we'll cover you for that one so, um mm -hmm. i think this is a that's to be a really good opportunity for you to get out and explore the city. Um, and, and that's what we saw in Dubai. Uh, that's what I think you did in Charm a little bit, Steva. So definitely encourage folks uh, to, to bring some spending money uh, for definitely some meals out. I encourage you. Um, in terms of uh, not knowing your academic schedule yet, um, that's part of the reason why we select uh, delegates so early into the summer so that you can go into the quarter knowing um, your schedule. 
Uh, luckily this year it's actually better than previous years in that it's not during finals week, um, which is a little bit harder to uh, finesse, but it might interfere with some of your midterms. Um, and so what we encourage is if you're accepted into the delegation, um, you when you're play, building your schedule, reach out to your professors as early as possible before you've even signed up with classes for them, um, if you can. Let them know about your schedule. Let them know um, if it's going to interfere with midterms that you'd like to make alternate plans. Really, the earlier you can do this, the better. Um, in particular, this is useful because um, if, for example, there is some conflict that you can't um, can't uh, move around, um, the earlier you know, the better, um, because we can try to assist um, and and work something out. Um, so sort of the earlier you run into those issues, the better, because it gives us more um, more time. Exactly, and I'll elaborate on that. And I think Sativa and I are, and we've been on the same page for the past couple of years that um, your academic program and experience certainly comes first, and that is the priority. And uh, we're happy to help supply additional information to faculty and professors, but um, we understand that this is, uh, you know, an optional program offered by the university and by Epic and by career advancement. And uh, we don't want to use this as a chance to step on the toes of faculty who are designing a rigorous academic experience here at the university. I'm more than happy to talk with them specifically if they have questions about the program. And um, I'll be frank, over the past year, we, we've handled this on a fairly case-by-case -case basis, but we definitely did this ahead of pre-reg with understanding that you might be able to think about your schedule and courses and timelines. Um, by the time you are accepted, the dates will be set. So you will know that upon acceptance and you'll have a sense of which days and which potential classes that you might be missing. Um, in particular, the 15th through the 20th, that's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so happy to chat more about that specifically in one-on-one -on -one conversations. And this is frequently a conversation question during our interviews as well. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Happy to take a live one if you want to shout out or if you want to drop something in chat. Um, otherwise, definitely encourage. Oh, yeah. To... Yeah. Yes, man. Go ahead. Um, I hopped on like a couple of minutes into the session, but I noticed this was being recorded. It's going to be posted somewhere online. Yeah, it'll be put up on um, our website on the U Chicago at Cloud page, the same place we can access the um, applications. It should be there um, tomorrow. Well, if you have specific questions, our contact information is out there. More than happy to have uh, questions, conversations, but we're really looking forward to reading your applications. Um, you might think that it's a lot of busy work for us, but truth be told, I uh, really enjoyed hearing about everybody's experiences and passions for the community and climate uh, during last year's application. So looking forward to hearing about yours this year and uh, definitely encourage you to apply if you're interested. Um, I'm happy to stick around a few more minutes if anybody has any follow-up questions. Uh, Stephen, Mary, maybe if you want to stick around as well, if that's okay. Um, yeah. But otherwise, I will let everybody go and then um, uh, we do have one more question that just came through that I'd like to answer before too many people hop off. Um, someone asked if there's anything in particular um, you like to see in an applicant or um, delegate. Uh, so we do have our rubric um, on the um, application, which is pretty accurate to what we're looking for. Um, but I will say generally, um, I really like to see students who are pretty engaged on campus. Um, and part of that is because Part of what we're looking for um, this with this delegation doesn't just like stop with the conference itself. Um, we in particular hosted, I think, two events um, centered around COP afterwards um, with the students who were there. We often um, have people who come to campus who want to speak to the students who went to COP or special opportunities like that. We want you to engage with um, the communities that you're involved in on campus and talk about your experiences, talk about what you learned. Um, and so we really, really look for students who are engaged on campus in some way. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, like a climate group, um, but we want to see that you're involved on campus. Thanks for the question, Ryan.
All right. All right, we'll stick around, but thank you so much for joining and looking forward to seeing your applications.